The problem with the Dominion is that we only have their word when it comes to historical facts about the government. We know they aren't shy when it comes to boasting about their abilities, but how much of it is fact and how much of it leads into legend? The truth is, the Dominion is steeped in mystery and obfuscation to such a large degree that we can't be sure even how old the government is. As an example, Weyun 4 in the DS9 episode To the Death states that the Dominion has endured for 2,000 years. However, in the DS9 episode The Dogs of War, Weyun 8 claims that the Dominion hasn't lost a battle since its beginning 10,000 years ago. While in theory you could argue that if the Dominion was founded 10,000 years ago, then it would have endured multiple 2,000 year periods, the definitive nature in which Weyun 4 tells Sisko this information leads me to believe that this was not what was meant at the time. If I were to theorize, I would say that there are two possible explanations. The first is simply that Weyun 4 was lying. During the episode he told Sisko this information, again in To the Death, he was already giving vital pieces of data to Sisko that he knew would get back to Starfleet Command. It may have been an attempt to give bits and pieces of misinformation to keep things distorted. Surely, if the best lie has a kernel of truth, then the worst truth has a lie within it. It's possible that by giving this inaccurate information, it could cast doubt on Sisko's entire report. The other is that Weyun, regardless of which clone he is, simply isn't sure. It's possible that the changelings are so scared of solids that they keep their history obfuscated, even from those they have created and enslaved. I wouldn't be surprised if the changelings were so paranoid that they gave inaccurate information to the Vorta and Jim Hadar on purpose. Additionally, they could restrict most all information to any solid. Knowledge can be its own form of power, after all. This does raise questions on the entire formation of the Dominion, however. Remember, the stories that are given to us are given by the Founders, not exactly the most trustworthy. While I don't doubt that the Changelings were being persecuted, I wonder if there's more to it. While this isn't canon, and again it's just pure theory, it wouldn't surprise me when they expand the history of the Dominion to show them to have either coexisted on a planet with, or found themselves to be native of another race of solids. For whatever reason, a war between the two could have broke out. This could have been a war just on one planet or possibly been in a sector. The changelings would be hunted in some areas of space which then ties into later conversations of a changeling being chased and a Vorda who hid him from those attacking. The founders would form the Dominion and begin using genetic manipulation starting with the Vorda. This would be the beginning of their practices turning the Vorda into diplomats. At which point, perhaps the Dominion offered a diplomatic envoy. This could have been a trick, Dominion forces overrunning the defenses of the enemy, and then they turn those defeated solids into Jim Hadar and use their former enemy to protect them. It certainly would be interesting, fleshed out, and sound like something the founders would do. Regardless of what occurred, the changelings would ultimately send the genetically modified beings, again the Vorta and Jim Hadar, out in all directions to expand their empire. The Vorta generally arrive first, providing diplomatic options and concessions for the penance of the future client states, and should that fail, the Jim Hadar are sent in. It wouldn't take long for the Dominion to expand in hundreds of cultures, hundreds of races really, to be subjugated. By the sheer use of logic, the Dominion initially had to have some form of infrastructure and build their own ships. However, when we listen to dialogue, it becomes painfully clear that the Dominion heavily relies on subjugated client states for its needs as of the events of Deep Space Nine. Several different governments are noted as the ones to build and supply the massive Dominion war machine by the time Starfleet became aware of their presence. One of the amazing attributes of the Dominion is its intelligence gathering abilities. We have reason to believe that the Dominion was far more aware of the Federation than should be possible before the discovery of the wormhole. Though interestingly, I haven't been able to find any evidence on whether the Dominion was aware of the Borg or not. You would think, given the Dominion's ability to know about the Federation, they would have intelligence on the cybernetic species, but we just don't know. However, that aside, we'll discuss the mentality of the Dominion after a quick moment on how you personally, you personally watching this, can destroy cancer. Hey guys, today I've partnered with Defending Earth, The Adventures of Sarah Jane Smith. 
This collection features stories from established Doctor Who and Doctor Who spin-off writers who have written for the franchise's books and audio novels. Their stories cover everything from Sarah Jane's earliest meetings with the Doctor, to her discovering aliens producing unlicensed musicals about her life, to her inspiring a whole new generation. The proceeds go directly to the Cancer Research Institute, which is just awesome, by the way. For those who don't know, I've dealt with cancer almost all my life. Both my father and nephew had it, and a lot of people on the Reddits call my entire channel cancer. So it's something really big to me. Check them out in the links below. Now let's just get back into it. In all of this, we've discussed the genesis and the buildup of the Dominion diplomats and military machine. However, the society of the Dominion and those under it is just as intriguing. Everyone knows that the Dominion has the founders as the leaders, believed to be gods. Interestingly, most cultures, most civilizations will never see the founders. And then you have both the Vorta and the Jim'Hadar, with the Vorta seeming to be the messengers, administrators, and diplomats, and the Jim'Hadar, the foot soldiers. Though not everything was as it seemed. While we know that most Vorta seem wholly devoted, only having an example of one defector trying to leave and join the Federation, we're made to believe that Jem'Hadar rebel much more. This is why the Jem'Hadar would be required to have chemical addiction along with the training to keep them obedient. And there were, of course, tensions between the Jem'Hadar and Vorta as both vied for favor in the eyes of the Founders, and had little use for anything else. This shows a sort of Gilded Age, everything being pristine on the outside, with the inner being rusty and gross. We're never completely told what life under the Dominion was like, but it does seem to have some form of hierarchy and system to it when it comes to the client states. We know that several different powers work for the Dominion, creating their wares, and different species appear to interact with each other as well. Looking at the client states themselves, there appear to be some that are more important than others. It's likely that the subjugated species are allowed to work within their own bubble and do whatever they want as long as it's for the glory of the Dominion. Additionally, interaction between other Dominion planets and territories is allowed while interaction outside of the Dominion borders appears to be limited. I am also going to note that given how far we see Starfleet is able to corrupt and venture into Dominion territory in order to trade illegal goods and interact with other species, you remember when Starfleet was instigating the war, it appears that the Dominion rule by threat of force more than force itself as they aren't able to stop Starfleet. Dominion forces, in fact, seem to be unable to keep out or widely detect incursions into their own territory, showing they may not be able to keep as strong a hold on their space as they pretend to. All of this leads into the mentality of the Founders, though. Ultimately, nothing matters to the Changelings except themselves. Now, I get that this might be something people consider a no-duh, but I don't think they really realize to the extent. The Founders don't care about anything solid. Whether a specific solid lives or dies doesn't mean a lot to them. Entire planets are engulfed in plagues, others allowed to flourish. In fact, the female changeling in the Alpha Quadrant was quoted as saying they would give up the entire Alpha Quadrant to have Odo. While this is maniacal, it's also telling. The changelings truly only cared about themselves and their own safety. Everyone else was just a pawn to them. The point of talking about the Dominion and the changelings before we even get into the events of Deep Space Nine was to give an understanding of their mentality, just like we had done with the Federation. And now, with both of the principal players analyzed and their baggage brought to bear, we'll see how all this plays out in the next episode as the Federation starts hearing whispers of a Dominion threat.